Hey, I'm Marcus Brown, and uh, some of you may know I like to make ski movies. Also, I've learned I like to have conversations with interesting people in the sport. So earlier this year at the Hilltop Pro-Am, I sat down with some of the top athletes in this industry, and uh, that's what you're gonna see right now. Some interesting conversations, hopefully, with uh, some of the top skiers in the sport. Hope you guys enjoy. Robbie, what's going on, dude? Where are we at? What are we doing? We are at Hilltop Pro um, in Seattle, Washington, and it is an absolutely beautiful site. Have you ever been here? I've never been here. I've seen all the videos and all the stuff. I was always, I was excited to come, but things never usually look as good as they do on, on video in real life. But no, man, it's, it's beautiful. It's amazing. Not a blade of grass out of place? No, no, no. Does, <laughs> does it remind you of England? Yeah, yeah, it does actually. It's kind of like a, a similar, slightly chilly version of England. Everything's big, everything's nice and green. Everything's very, everything's very, just yeah, beautiful. Just with a bit more blue dye in the lake. <laughs> it's mad. <laughs> How's the season been so far? Talk to me about the season. It's been amazing. Like it's kind of, as a child, I don't know if I feel like most kind of water skiers who skied from a very young age, like I did. Like I've watched, I watched every single webcast when I was a kid. I would never miss a webcast, no matter what. Um, just never would. And kind of watching all that, watching all the people ski, seeing people getting, oh, 3 at 41, that's what you're gonna need, guessing the finals, guessing all the cuts. Um, and then to actually kind of be in the first tournament of the year and, and make the, the final at Swiss and get 3 at 41 twice, it was like, oh man. <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> never, never quite, I always dreamed of it, but I never quite thought that yeah. it actually kind of go well. Does this feel like a breakout year for you? Yeah, I, I guess. Um, in, in my head, I'd always hoped that I was gonna go out there and, and because I've never, that was my first American pro, like, pro tournament, really. Um, I'd never imagined that I would actually go out there and it would go well. So, I, I mean, I don't know whether breakout's the right word. I made a few finals, but um, in my head, it was the start of the season that I needed. And um, it kind of gave me some hope for the, for the future of my skiing. Take me back real quick to your childhood. Uh, originally, why did you water ski? What was it? Um, <laughs> Can you pinpoint it? One thing? I mean, maybe it's more than one thing. But Pretty just sure my parents thing. went, right, here's some skis, there's a rope, da, da, da. <laughs> No, I think, I mean, there's pictures of me. I was in the boat from, there's a, there's a picture of me that's on my, well, not my wall, but in, in the dining room, and there's me with this big life jacket on, pulling a rope in, no pants on, or underwear. <laughs> like, <ne> <laughs> We may need that picture. You might have to find that picture yeah, for Yeah, it's us. right. The, the, the bits are covered, but there's like, yeah. me, I just, I was, my parents, it's, I'd say my family kind of, the way that I was built up in the family is slightly different to a lot of water skiing families. Like, um, obviously with, with Mike and Will and Tom and Tim, and they're all very serious skiers. Dad was a good, I mean, he got two at 38 or two at 11. Um, and mum wasn't a water skier, she kind of married in. But she, but they, they loved it. And dad put a lot obviously into the lake and the business with Tim. And it wasn't like, I was never pushed. I was never, they, they have said many times, they tried to force me into other sports. So I wasn't just a, a, a ski bug, like I did rugby, football, hockey, yeah. cricket, all that kind of stuff, because they didn't, it wasn't the only thing that they wanted me to do. They you could throw a ball me. pretty good. I've yeah, seen well, it. Question. <laughs> good enough, you but get yeah, by. And that's, and that's why I think I'm lucky that I was never forced into it. The only thing they really kind of, forced me to do was was trick I, had, I think the rule was if I tricked I had to do three tricks to a jump obviously I ignored it but yeah, obviously because yeah. I always wanted to go out there and jump like 10 times yeah. like no you should, you're like eight years old you should probably like chill on the knees a little bit <laughs> <laughs> and do a few tricks but um what's your favorite event ah uh, that's just one of those questions isn't it um yeah. right now current, current right now well I'm in a slalom tournament so it has to be slalom no it's yeah it, it's slalom jump there's just something about jump that it's just it's terrifying it's it's all kind of scary and dangerous and but that second after you come off the top of the ramp well half a second like you're only in the air for like three seconds yeah. but that quarter of a second after you're off We're the ramp going up. you can see your tips yeah. you're going up the lake the world you just the the lake like opens up to you and it's just like oh man this is this is where it's at, and I, I love I love jump, love love slalom, and yeah, it's just a. I think slalom's more of a boy-centered thing. Yeah. Like you, you go slalom and you go right. I need to get through it. Forty-one. Obviously, you can look at technique and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. jump, you just you jump sixty meters. Whether I'm trying to go sixty-five or if I jump somewhere near sixty meters, I'm like, oh, that was yeah. cool. Like you that can, was, that you was can fun. feel it. Yeah, it's a feeling. Yeah, it's, it's more it's, of a feeling. Yeah. Okay, but here yesterday in training, uh, fresh off the plane, I saw you get three forty-one. Mm -hmm. And you just mentioned it a couple of times. Is that really your goal, or like, what what's your goal when you set out? Like, ultimately, what's going to make you feel 
something close to that feeling that first what's half second off what, the ramp what's my goal is in, in like of enjoying i don't i don't know my goal is just getting better like i think every single time skate i want to win 41 obviously yeah. um and just it's just the feel I, and it's a similar thing the feeling of when you ride the line i, I don't know if that's a phrase that that's the phrase it's that fine. i think of. the phrase of riding the line like cooking up at the turn accelerate into the wake and just ride the wake just feel like there's nothing there the effortless two hands staying connected all that kind of stuff when you feel that it's like the same thing you're like oh man this, this is what it's it's not like inside outside inside it, i guess that's the feeling that i'm always looking for and obviously 41 is nice but um yeah obviously the goal is to run it tell me a key for you a technical key that's helped you find that feeling you just talked about and, and why you think it's worked Technical, it's hard because it's, um, in terms of words, it's... I it's really hard to describe. I don't know if there's words there. For me, for me, it's a lot of kind of bringing the handle in through the second wake, really trying to rotate off the second wake and, and outward bound up on the boat. Because I have the, the biggest habit for me, my whole life has been letting go with one hand, jumping inside and yeah. obviously the wave, I'm pretty sure that's where the wave came from. <laughs> The but wave. um that's a that's a popular wave a lot of people it, do that it started to, yeah. you i'd love to say Terry i started Winter. it but i copied it apparently <laughs> carl robert no okay. all, all i remember is taking the um let's say having banter with someone about their arm <laughs> when we were younger and she used to do it all the time all the time and um, we always used to kind of joke about it that it was a bit weird and what you're doing that for that's stupid and then i remember seeing a picture with me obviously it was when we were younger there wasn't loads of pictures around facebook and i saw my arm like here and i was like what is that? <laughs> <laughs> I spent my whole childhood like making jokes about this. Looking arm. in the mirror now. <laughs> and now I'm like, man, it's popped up. So when you take the handle, you're, you're talking about maybe twisting out or keeping the handle in, keeping the handle close. Are you trying to keep it close and in front of you? You're trying to yeah, keep it close and to the side. Which it, arm has the load? Um, for me, it's thinking about kind of squeezing my left hip through. I want to be going into one, say. The, yeah, the base, yeah. the basis of my, and it, I kind of tried to dial in on it when I started doing a lot more coaching. Was the basis is I want an arrow on my hip, chest, knees, and ski. Obviously, it's the ski that I'm trying to look for in, my, in the way that I think about it. And HOs have a nice pointy tip, so it's a little easier. Yeah. Unless the new one's done. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it's just trying to get that ski to remain outward bound, to remain out toward the bank. So when I'm coming into the first wake, I'm trying to, I'm trying to stay fast and light and rotate the hips, rotate the chest, really get my feet pointing out towards the bank. And then when I edge change, trying to keep that rotating and and keep the handle coming in because that helped me a lot when I was kind of trying to yeah. get through 38, 39 yeah. and think about coming to here and moving, moving outward bound. I got, a, I got a question though, because I, I agree with what you're saying, yeah. but I feel like if you're on a bar stool yeah. and you're tied to a handle yeah. and you twist, your, you twist this way with you your upper body, inside. Well, no, no. Your yeah. your lower body or your your feet yeah, are going to twist yeah. to to the down course or like yeah. towards the buoy instead of out towards the shore. Yeah. But isn't that a good thing? I think I don't know. See, it's it's the transition. It's the because I, I was always I mean in England I don't know what it was like in those. It was always straight arms. You, yeah. My whole childhood it was yeah. if you bend those arms you're going in. Yeah. I mean you, from a learner. Yeah, it's to drilled into your head. Boom, straight arms. You watch old videos of Will straight arms. Yeah. Whereas then it was kind of like obviously Nate popped up and you you were pretty. You were pretty in with the arms, weren't you? I'm trying to think. Yeah, I would um, do stupid stuff. I, but, but I mean, I, I think I, I was doing okay things, but I, I didn't have, yeah. I didn't have, I wasn't doing as good as you're doing it. No, yeah. And I think it's, it's, it's for me, it's just a matter of, if I think about relaxing my arms, I just come here. Yeah. I just, I just come inside my chest. Whereas for me, it's more like of a release outward bound. Like obviously sure. you're going to run into the boy at some point. So for me, it's kind of a. But I like what you're talking about. I'm just, I'm just trying to make no, sure that we unpack it because I like if it. you, if you're thinking about keeping the handle closer, or rather keeping your body close to the handle, it's yeah, kind, of, it's kind of the real result. But, but, but sometimes as a skier, you got to think about where the handle is relative to you. See, now but, you say it, and I think about it. It's, it's less. Of, I'm just trying to. Th I have a feeling in that I'm trying to look for, and I get it every now and then. Yeah. It's like I'm gonna have to sit this way now. Yeah, you, yeah. You've got oh, me into right. it. That's good. So when I'm, when I'm here, it's a kind of a feeling of come in like I'm trying to twist like I'm squeezing that that like left butt cheek yep. um, forward and through it's forward and through but it's trying to squeeze to here and I think that's why sometimes I shoot the ski out in front of me at 41 yep. which um, but but doing this move I will say creates a torque yeah. that keeps your ski from shooting too far yeah, too soon that's what so I think that's a good move is what I'm saying yeah, I, yeah. I think it helps you keep it actually creates a torque that keeps your ski kind of pointed more towards the buoy going yeah. outbound yeah which helps you keep your feet closer yeah, to you so which, not moving. Yeah. which helps keep from the ski getting so far away that you 
come to the inside. inside. Don't come inside. Yeah, and that's so the. I, um, I think it's a good key. Yeah, really good yeah, key. and that's it's. It's a feeling, and I kind of realised actually, like I think it was last year. I'm like, man, I haven't thought of anything different for like two years. So like from, I just kind of thinking of that feeling, thinking of that feeling. Actually, last year I tried to kind of add a few different things in, yeah. which was interesting. Um, I was very kind of in a rotational phase in my head. I was like, right, well, I need to rotate through this course. It's obvious if the ski goes there, why would I want to stay open when I'm trying to get the ski that way? And I realised that maybe two four, that's not a fantastic idea at the finish of that. Like I was. Yep. getting all this kind of stuff and you'll probably see me do it this weekend it's kind of my, my safety thing because I know that the move. line's there it's yeah. kind of rotating through the finish of the turn on two format on side and coming this way um, and I realised that that probably wasn't a fantastic idea and trying to kind of change that a little bit get myself it's a little bit more lower body movement because one through five I'm, I, I, st I still believe that it's rotation everyone was, and I, I, would, I don't want to be wrong but this was kind of your kind of west coast style more um, I was pretty young when that was a, yeah, thing. a thing. All I've heard is the West Coast style yeah. is chest down course. Like when I go to a lot of clinics and stuff, people are trying to keep their chest down course at the finish of 135, yeah, but then they're missing, yeah, offside, but then they're never actually getting it. Like when you see you do it, you come through and you stay open. And then the way I see it is you come off the second wake and you really, you talk, you, you yeah. talk yourself up and you go from open to move, like I watched yeah. Terry Winter at US Open, yeah. I was like, man, you can see him so much, he's open, open, but he does this off the second wave, yeah. then close off. I, I think that's a key move. And um, moves. There, there's more than one way to skin the cat. Like yeah, obviously, oh God, yeah. loading on the inbound, yeah. like the downswing yeah. to center line, if you rotate the direction you're going and you load your lead shoulder, yeah. it does help you resist the boat by lowering the yeah. torque. So if I have my body like this, yeah instead of open to the boat, yeah. my body like this, the connection points lower on my body, yeah. so I have effectively more lever yeah. against the boat. Yeah. However, but then you, don't get you that. usually overload and yeah. you usually get, people get this yeah. on the second you know, outbound yeah. move. And so what I found is like if you, yeah. more efficient to be a little more open, yeah. inbound, and you get more effective mass shift and you get more effective acceleration, but then you have the move to make. You actually yeah, have a move, move to make yeah. like this, which helps keep the ski yeah. pointed at the buoy. Yeah with a handle and less likely to shoot out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that, and, that's, and I, I like that feeling, but for me, if I think about being open, then my feet don't follow. So I like to think about, I, the way that I've always put it is, I'm not moving my chest, I'm not driving with my chest. Like I like to think about my outside left, uh, right shot, offside again, yeah. right shoulder, right hip, right knee, right foot, all coming kind of around the circle. And for, uh, kind of, Freddie Winter is yeah. someone who I think you see that big time yeah. from, will a little bit, but it's a little more movement there. Yeah. Um, I just like to really think about coming around at that finish of the turn and the shoulders are moving. They're not yeah. driving, but they're following because if everything's around here, then I'm going to get that little bit more angle and then I'm going to get that, that whip that's, feeling that's that I think you get from this yeah. and I can still load it because I'm not necessarily leaning on it, but I'm twisting into that, if yeah. that makes sense. Kind of wrap, wrapping into it. Yeah, yeah, kind of that feeling. And then I, there's a little more to give, but that's, yeah, just really trying to, almost keep that ski trimming, but really move through the finish. And I know I had an interesting conversation with you in, oh June, God, I yeah. can't remember where the hell we were, was yeah, somewhere. Was Florida. Um, and trying to talk about the back of the ski and that was actually changed how I thought of that a little bit. And it actually made, it made the way that I think about it make a bit more sense. It was something else in there. Um, yeah, we should talk more about that yeah. later. I, I hope the lawnmower doesn't come over here. Seven. That's gonna bum us out. Sounds like he's coming. He's coming. It? He's there, isn't he? He's coming. He's coming for us. Oh man. Let me see if he's. Let me see what he's doing. All right, let's finish this up. Where's he going? We, we got. Uh, he's gonna go down there for a bit, and then I'll, I'll take a break. Um, kind of got off track on technical stuff because I really didn't plan that, but that's great. That's fine. Uh, what what drives you to ski? What what literally? If you could pinpoint one thing right now, at your age, you've kind of had a semi kind of breakthrough year here in America yeah. on, on the pro tour, we'll call it. Yeah. And I don't know, I want to know, I think a lot of people want to know what drives you to do this. I think it, I've done it for, I, I don't want to sound like I'm an old man, but I've done it for so, I, like, I've done it for so long. I've done it for, I'm only 22 and I've done it for 18 years in Salem for like, um, I don't know, 17, 15 of them. Yeah. And it's, so it's, it's like, I know a lot of people kind of say it's not, it's building into a habit. So part of it's a habit that makes me go out there every day and, and it's almost a habit that I enjoy it. I just, I thoroughly enjoy it. Like I go out there and obviously there's some days where you ski like 
rubbish and I've got to fly. You've got to fly. <laughs> well, some days you go out there and you ski like rubbish and it, it's not so fun, but there's always a boy in there that you get that feeling. It's like, man, I want to get that feeling again. And it's always been, you ski rubbish, you want to go out there and fix it. You ski really well and you want to go out there and feel it again. Yeah. So there's no like, obviously there's sometimes in the middle where it's like, man, I just don't really want to. But then again, it's that, actually, I might just try this with my fin and I might just like, if there's a long and just try search, it's the search for that feeling. And I think it's the, and obviously the score, I want to come here and I want to um, go on a webcast and rip it up. Like that's yeah. kind of the goal. Like I say, I watched a lot of webcasts when I was a kid. Yeah. I was like, man, that guy looks so cool. Like, yeah. like, man, and I remember that. That's the thing. I don't think it's- Kids are watching you now, dude. Yeah, it's not, I don't want to like feel, it sounds a bit big headed, but I'm like, I, we were having a conversation with Will. He was like, um, man, I just don't think there's that much like hype around. Like, like when Jamie Boucher and he used to watch him on a, on a lake, um, he was like, man, that's so cool. I want to be there. I want to do that. That's what I want to do. And I was like, you don't realize, but I was that kid to you as you were to Jamie Boucher. And I was like, man, when you used to turn up, I used to put my stuff in front of the, the whiteboard because I wanted to watch him ski. And like Tom, it was the same thing for me. And I remember that. And I understand that there's a lot of kids there that, um, that watch yep. that. Yep. And, I, and I was that. Like, I love it when, um, when I've done a few clinics at home and, and you get to go ski and they're like, oh man, are you going to ski? Are you going to ski? And they get excited. And it's like, to me, it's boring, but you go out there and, and you go out there and go, it's, it's fun to see people get that excited about sure. skiing. It's not, I don't think it's showing off. I don't think it's kind of, it's no. just going out there and doing a few flips and you make this kid's day and it's like, oh man, that's actually, like they've, I've spread the joy of the sport and that's yeah. what we're here for. Yeah, we go out here and we run 3 at 41 on a webcast and it's cool to watch and you want to meet them, but I think it's, yeah, there's a lot of excitement for, for when people ski well and hopefully um, I can ski well and get a little bit of excitement for myself. I love that. Yeah, I think, I think that's important. Speaking of the webcast, uh, what could you accomplish in the next two, three days that would make you walk away from this weekend feeling good? And don't be afraid how it sounds. I mean, I just want to know. Like, yeah, what could I accomplish? I mean, honestly, I would, my, my first goal, well, <laughs> first goal is to make the gates. That's yeah. always the okay. start goal. All right. All right. Um, no, I want to make the final. Like, I will I'll truly be happy. I feel like it, at my age and where I am, if I make a final, then that's a good start. You can't, if you're not in it, you can't win. So no matter, like at, at Swiss, I was a little bit miffed and I kept kind of making finals and skiing a bit yeah, in the finals. Um, but I was like, I'm here. If I'm, I'm in the final, at some point, it's going to snap and I'm going to go get 41 in the final and yeah. be able to throw the fist and be happy. But at the minute is if I can put two good scores in in the prelims and I can be on the dock with the eight best people in the world, then that's, that's a very good day for me. There's not that many tournaments. I don't have too much experience on the pro scene. Um, so yeah, I mean, if I make the final, I'll be, I'll come away happy. And um, I mean, it'd be nice to get, I don't think I've been top five yet. No, it'd be nice to get a top five I mean, podium. I don't know. I mean, of course I'd want to win. I'm not, I'm not here. I do, tr I, I believe that if I need, I need a bit of luck and need a bit of amazing skiing to just get to the final and I need that for another day in the final. But there's, I wouldn't be here if I didn't think that I could pop out a score and maybe we'd be in the chance of winning. But who knows? We'll find out in three days, won't we? <laughs> yes, we will. Last question. The rest of the season, what do you want to accomplish? What do you got coming up and what do you um, hope to do? What do I want to accomplish? Uh, so we have California Prime next week and then we have a little bit of a break. Then we have Malibu Open, Worlds and um, Mastercraft Pro. I don't think. And then there's Miami, which unfortunately I'm not going to be here for. Um, which is a shame because it's a new tournament. I'd love to support it, but um, just can't quite make it work with visas and things. But no, I, again, same thing as here. I think it's like I say, it's my first real proper year skiing. If I go and make final, if I go to California Prom and I make a final, I'm going to be so happy. Like it's a, it's they're full fields. It's it's the it's the best skiers in the world, and you're competing against them. And if I can make a final and go out there on Sunday or make a head to head or. Um, and that's the biggest thing to me. It's all about being consistent. Like you see. You see some people are, are, are great at doing 441 sometimes, but to me, the best people are the ones that can do three at 41 all day, every day. Yeah. And, that's, and that's what I look at. I'd love to be on the dock and I don't think, as a kid, I always imagined that you watch people and you go, man, it must be so good turn up to a pro tournament and just knowing that you're gonna get three at 41. Like again, Will, like I obviously watch him the closest out of everyone else in slalom. And I would turn up and go, man, it must be so cool to turn up and know that you can just get three at 41. And in my head, I'm still searching for that, but I now understand that Yes, even though it looks like they get it all the time, it's not a guarantee. No. But that, that's, that's the goal, to be able to get 
two, three at 41 all day, every day, and um, and then push it down there when, when the time is right. But um, yeah, consistency this season. Finals, and you can only you can only podium if you make the finals. It's all good being able to run 41, but if you can't get two at 41 to make it in the final, then there's no point. So that's kind of, that's where I'm at, trying to get 39s all day. And I think, not to go deep, but I think you just highlighted something that bugs me about the sport mm -hmm. in general, which is kind of the short-term hero approach. Mm -hmm where people are like fired up, more fired up about kind of a, a, a practice PB or oh, yeah. like, you know, where maybe their, their buddy who was driving might yeah. have been helping them a little <laughs> bit or whatever, yeah. than they are about kind of finding a feeling that creates consistency. Yeah, and, that, and that's, and I know, I know, like I say, I know, I, I would think I'd be not alone in saying that Will's one of the most consistent skiers in the world and has been for the last 20 years. Yeah. And, that's that's my goal. My goal is to be able to go out there and, and not be able to go and like I say, not be able to go and get Fort forty one once in a blue moon and make it into the finals and like obviously it happens, you make mistakes, everyone does. But I, I wanna be the kind of guy that, okay, if I'm on the dock last off, I know that I'm gonna get Fort forty one. I remember seeing it was Matt Fraser in the CrossFit Games and he was like, My goal is to know that when I turn up into a tournament we're stuffed. Like everyone else is like, Oh man, we're not gonna win. Yeah. And obviously that's the goal. That's everyone's goal. That's everyone who's here. Um but hey, yeah, he's a, he's a skier. He's a yeah. water skier. Yeah, I saw, I saw, I saw. He's been out there. We uh, we we need to get him on the water. We, we need to get him on a new ski first. We, do. we, we need do. to get him on the water. Yeah, we do. We do. Yeah, Fraser, we're gonna get you a new setup, buddy. Yeah, that sounds good. But yeah, no, that's the and it's like I say, for me, I'd love to. I'd, but I know it's weird, and I'll say it. My tournament PB is boy less than my practice PB. It's like, but then I, I think that holds people back. I'm like, oh man, you haven't run forty one. I'm like, well, no. But the fact that I can go out there in a tournament when I I hurt my rib the the start of the week, didn't ski for three days, go out there and get a PB. I'm like, to me, that, that's a winner. I see all these people going on in practice and kind of running 41 and making 39s a key. I'm like, oh, I can't do that. Why, why, why does that look so easy? That's, <laughs> that's me my, like that's killing my myself at 39. And I'm yeah. like, well, I, I, and then I'd turn up to a tournament and hopefully it goes well. And, and that, that's, that's kind of, and I think that's in our ethos in England and that's our ethos in at Hazelwood Ski World, the PWTC, definitely it's, doesn't matter what the hell you do in tournament. We don't write down tournament practice PBs. Sorry, doesn't matter what you do in practice. practice yeah. It's about getting confidence and consistency. And that's yeah. hopefully that I'll take through, hopefully a long career is that um, tournament's where it's at and yeah. getting consistent. And the goal is to be consistent on 41. I think that's everyone's goal, but yeah, that's the goal. Well, on that topic, last, last question. Um, do you know how old Andy was when he won his first world championships? No, I have no idea. No, how old was he? 20? I think he was like 18. Was he 18? I think. Yeah. I could be making that up. Sounds but, about right. But very little, very little kind of international experience, kind of an unknown in a way, and world champ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you, are you properly addressing the potential that you have a chance to go out and so crush buoys at the Worlds this year? So for me, I have no, obviously I'm the only one that's in my head and everyone else is the only person that's in that. So I have no idea, say Sean Hunter, Joel, all the, all the kids that are my age. Yeah. I'm not going to be stupid and say, I'm not going to jump to Worlds and hope that you win. It's in all of our, like I say, we've all been skiing for years, really. Yeah. We've all been watching all these people win Worlds and like, oh man, that looks so cool. Like just yeah. to go do that. I'm not going to say that I don't want to do that. Yeah. But to me, it, it's, it's another tournament. To me, the world is important as Hilltop. And that's, I think a lot of people really kind of prioritize stuff, but I just want to go out there and if it's a tournament, I just want to ski well. I want to make fans, I want to prove myself. I want to go out there and, and get through it 41, 4 at 41 and, and be consistent through that. And I don't know, yeah, it's, it's tough, isn't it? Like, obviously I dream of doing that, being the underdog that no one looks at. Oh my God, you get to 4 at 41, wins the world, and, and there's a big runoff or something like that. But um, yeah, it's 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 an it's another tournament. It's a big tournament. It's the world. I mean, it's you say you're world champion. Not many people can say that. No. Um, well, the cool thing is, um, it, it well it is harder to stay on top than to get on top. Yeah. So obviously you know that. Like it's oh, easy. It's easier to just pop one off. Yeah. And then now everybody's looking at you, and you're not the underdog yeah. anymore. Well, but yeah. Well, that uh, when I did Swiss, I was like, oh man, I was really good. I was really, yeah. and like all pumped. Yeah. But then I was more excited when I went to Corey's the next week and got 341 again. I was like, oh man, yeah. this is not just like... Backing it up. I probably spoke to George. I was like, oh my God, oh my God, I did it again. What the, where the hell is this coming from? Yeah. And then went again and went to, to Drew's and ended four. And I was like, I actually feel like... I, I, I felt obviously like I'd accomplished something at Swiss. And then yeah. to do it again and make Masters with a 41, I was like, 
I actually feel like I haven't just popped off one big score. I've been able to be consistent. As we talked about most of the interview, it's consistency that I'm looking for. Yeah. And I felt like I did that at the start of the season. Well, definitely uh, one of my favorite quotes within the realm of um, kind of professional athletes is be who you are on the way up because that's who you're going to have to be on the way yeah. down. And I think there's a lot of young kids watching you right now, what you're doing on the water, what you're doing off the water. And it's really cool to, and refreshing to hear somebody who's doing it for the right reasons, in my opinion, and, and doing it for the love of it and the yeah. craft and perfecting it and finding those feelings and working through the struggles and the downtimes because that is uh, a bigger lesson as an individual. You, you, be, you become a better person through that yeah. process, yeah. I think. Um, and the good skiing and the performances and the podiums oh, are secondary. Oh, bonus. Yeah, and, yeah. and that's, and that's I know, I, know I, I was one of them. I was a kid that watched pro skiers and go, oh my God, I want to be that. That's why, that's why I skied and I loved it, of course. But I went out there, I'd watch a webcast and I'd be skiing. I'm like, oh man, I feel like Will, I feel like Nate or Freddie. I'm like, oh man, I feel, I was trying to run whatever it was, 32, yeah. 58, no matter what it was. Yeah. But I watched that and it, it, it inspired me. I never watched a webcast and went, oh, that was cool and went to bed. No. I watched a webcast and was like, oh man, I want to ski. Yeah. Or I, wanna, I did ski if it was the middle of the day. Jumping out of your skin. And I, I, I understand that, that that is, yeah, it's, it's cool to watch. And hopefully it's, um, hopefully there'll be many more tournaments to watch in the future. Well, thanks, buddy, for sitting down. It was thanks fun. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Time to go ski. Ski time. Yeah.